Hi Sailors, I'm going to give you a peek behind the scenes of uh, the development of Sailway 3. Uh, it's been a very hard few weeks um, trying to tweak the forces in uh, that are that work on your boat and ultimately make it propel forward. And for instance, this here is a small test project that I made for uh, uh, computing the forces in the sails and the airflow along the sails. Like this. So uh, here we have a section of the sail. It is divided into uh, 16 parts. And these 16 parts show up here and here on the sides. Uh, the wind angle is 45 degrees at the moment. And what happens is that on the inside of the sail, the wind is bent along these 16 sections until it reaches an angle of 16.43 degrees here at the end. On the other side, same thing, the wind flows along the sail and here you see what happens to the angles. In the column next to it, you see what happens to the wind speed. It's 8 meters per second and then it increases up to almost 14 uh, meters per second and here the speed decreases to 4.44 meters per second and that results in a force. You can see it here, the red arrow is the force sideways, the green arrow is the force forward. Now if I, uh, for instance, change the depth of the sail and make it flatter, make it more flat, you can see what happens is 12.22, 5.14. It was 4 and 13 just, uh, just a moment ago. So you can see what happens when you make your sail uh, more deep, 15, 16. And also, of course, what happens when the angle of the wind changes. So here I play a lot with this um, to make sure that the sails uh, uh, operate like they should. And uh, another thing that you see here is whether the sails are too loose or too tight. The angle is too loose or too tight because wind can only bend so much if you uh, push it too hard if you make your sail really round where the wind is blowing very fast uh, it will just let go of the sail it will not follow the direction of the sail anymore and you have your sheet too tight or too loose so here you can see what happens when for instance like this yeah the wind is coming from behind so uh, what do you expect but if I make it 45 again uh, 45 like this and I pull the sheet, you can see the numbers go up and here as well, it loses the wind on the outside and uh, yeah, and the wind stalls here as well. So um, yeah, that's how it works and uh, the result is a force in uh, Newton that I apply to the boat. Now let's have a look at those boats. So I made these uh, two drawings of a boat from the side and from the front or rear and uh, while the uh, the bells are playing in the background, do you hear them? <laughs> We're going to have a look at all the forces that work on this boat. So first of all, no one can escape it, there's gravity. Gravity is pulling the boat down and uh, the size of this force is of course determined by the weight of our boat. Um, but here the gravity is um, represented as one arrow, as if the boat is one uh, big thing. But in, when you look at it from the side, you can see that there is a force working on the ballast in the keel. There's a force working on the heel, uh, the hull, and uh, of course a force on working on the rig, the mast, and the sails, and uh, uh, the stays. They weigh significantly, and. Uh, you can see that these forces work on sev uh, separate parts of the hull and uh, together they result in, you can 
make one fourth of this and the lateral point will in this case be somewhere here uh, so if you have a lighter uh, rig lighter sail lighter mast then this arrow will be smaller and the lateral point will of course be lower and the, the lower this lateral point is the better and I'll show you that in a minute so because there's not a force working on the boat and that's the flotation force the force from the water against the hull if it weren't there the boat would simply sink and um, this force equals the force of the gravity normally if there are no other forces at play so in this case the force works uh, upwards and here as well upwards but you can see here that this upwards force the lat lateral point of this force is not in the center of the boat but it's here because the water runs a bit like this so it's in the middle of the part of the boat that is in the water this part is uh, out of the water so the forces the lateral point uh, of the gravity and the lateral point of the flotation force they are not aligned and they will pull the boat upright again so the further these two are apart the more stable the boat is that's why also a boat with a wide hull is more stable than a boat with a narrow hull then we have sail the forces in the sail there's big force pushing the boat forward this, this is the result of the force from the foresail and the mainsail and uh, when looked from uh, the front you can see that this force um, basically works this way there's also a sideways force that pushes the boat uh, over and try uh, causes heel and it doesn't really work in that direction it works in this direction so it also pushes the boat down a little bit I'll show you that when we look at the next set of arrows this is the lift from the boat so here's the boat or the rig being pushed down by the wind it produces a force downward that's also why you see sometimes uh, small dinghies pulling the boat uh, towards uh, the wind which produces lift instead of uh, a downward force um, then so here's the downward force then as the boat moves through the water and especially if it has a flat hull on the on the flat bottom it will go up it will try uh, it will tend to be pushed upwards so there's an upwards force here and uh, if your boat has uh, a tendency to turn against the wind under heel you will have to pull the rudder and if you pull the rudder it produces an upward force as well uh, which is why uh, you can the, the, the stern will lift up a bit and the bow will go down a little bit if you pull that rudder under heel so there's another upwards force here and then there's drag because if there was no drag the, the boat would just go faster and faster until we reach the speed of light there's wind force wind drag so you have these uh, these um, purple arrows uh, the the hull itself has a certain area and it the wind pushes against it especially when going upwind there's a wind pushing against the cabin and there's wind pushing against the mast and the rig so then um, the force of course uh, of the drag through the water um, and you can see that here there is one force working on the hull there's a force working on the keel and one on the rudder this one increases if you give more rudder or less rudder uh, and there's also a friction force the friction of the water sliding along the hull that increases as the growth underneath the, the boat increases now if all these forces um, were stable you would be able to make a, a big equation and compute the speed heel and other things about the boat but they are uh, not stable they are they constantly influence each other uh, they constantly change uh, for instance if the boat speeds up um, this lift force will increase and since that lift force increases 
the uh, wet surface area decreases so um, the water drag decreases and if the water drag decreases then the boat speeds up a little bit more causing the wind drag to uh, increase and causing the uh, apparent wind angle to change and the apparent wind speed to change which maybe changes these forces in the sail and make the boat heel over more or less or I, I don't know so there are a lot of forces at play here and, and everything influences each other and it's almost impossible to make good computations with it um, and uh, but it would still be doable if the forces um, were exact if, if all this science was exact it isn't of course because uh, I don't know the shape of your uh, boat um, well I do know it and sail away does uh, evaluate it but that's all also a little bit uh, it's not exact either and um, it makes a lot of a difference if for instance your uh, cabin uh, is a rectangular box or if your cabin has a smooth uh, aerodynamic shape same goes for the hull for the underwater ship uh, whether or not how flat the bottom uh, of your boat is uh, it all it all depends and uh, it is evaluated um, at design time not at runtime but then it changes as, as well if the boat heels over everything changes if the, the a wave hits it and um, everything changes so it's constantly uh, on the move and um, this has to be done at runtime don't forget that so it has to be simplified as well and that requires a lot of tweaking on my side to make everything in balance and make the boat sail as if uh, it's a real boat and, and like you would expect it to be and I've, that's what I've been doing for the past uh, two and a half weeks I think and um, let me show you uh, the routine I made for that so I made this little test project um, to um, yeah, just uh, go through different wind speeds and different wind angles um, and then uh, let the boat sail try to optimize the sails a bit with a, a routine with optimized trim and then um, when the speed stabilizes um, it locks all forces and, uh, and the speed of course so I can uh, review that and it starts uh, doing the next uh, wind angle or that next wind speed so uh, let's put it to work I make the sea completely flat as you can see because I don't want any anything interfering and it's uh, testing uh, 8 meters per second wind so roughly 15 knots and uh, 60 degrees angle and uh, oh, you can see the speed going here 7.89 8 knots down a bit again probably because uh, it um, it adjusts the trim settings the, the system just need, uses some rules of thumb and it doesn't really experiment with making uh, the sail more curvy or less curvy and uh, well then it locks uh, the speed for me and uh, I'll show you so then it produces uh, a report for me and this is the result of uh, what we just did uh, the speed of 7.70 knots whereas the polar would indicate 6.9 knots so that's roughly within margin I think that's okay um, and you can see here the forces in the sail uh, the underwater forces water drag some speed co computations drift computations heel computations and that's uh, roughly uh, how I do it and um, while this boat is uh, doing his next test at 90 degrees angle um, I think I've uh, almost nailed it and uh, now I'm going to test uh, the mini transat which is uh, a lot lighter and uh, will probably push things to the limit a bit more and test my uh, forces system a bit more as well I hope I did everything right so uh, fingers crossed and um, let's hope everything goes as planned and I will be able to uh, push out a nice 
beta version for uh, some of you. I'm not going to make that public yet because uh, uh, yeah, that I just get a lot of emails and, and I also have to answer them and I also have to make a better version too and uh, ultimately uh, a production version in August. So uh, see you all and until next time.